Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome to the Underground Laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. We also work on comic books because this is the 100 days of Making Comics Challenge where we spend at least 30 minutes a day, every day, for 100 days straight working on our own personal comic book project. My project is this one, Young and the Dead. It's a kids versus zombie story. It's like Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. It's available at CircWorks.com. I've got three issues available. I'm working on issue four. This is my second round of 100 Days of Making Comics, and I'm trying to get this uh, this issue four done, so uh, we're working away at it. We're, we're moving along, uh, but we've got quite a bit of ways to go, but, uh, but this is definitely helping. The 100 Days of Making Comics is designed to take little tiny tidbits of time in your day Add those together and, and build it up, and then hopefully uh, by the end of those 100 days, you've got uh, quite a bit done on your comic book. So, and uh, that should be the case with me. Whether it's done or not, we will have made a lot of progress. So, we are day 50. One, 51. Hanging on to that 50. So, we got the big fat Sharpie. We're day 51. So, we'll write it down to the pad so we don't forget because uh, it gets confusing. When you've got 100 different days, you start to forget which day is which. Um, the days start to run into each other. So anyway, so day 51, we're going to set that aside. Uh, so a little bit, you know, I, I wanted to talk about sort of the evolution of, of what I do, you know, as far as being an artist and everything. Now, y'all, you, you know the Mad Scientist Laboratory here where we work, but uh, CircWorks has been around for a while before before even getting involved in in trying to take over the world via mad science and stuff like that. Uh, and originally it started, I used to do a lot of, of logo designs and things like that and the one thing that I would do I kind of build myself before it was CircWorks Art Labs the science of geekology it was CircWorks building illustration and design with characters so I you know I build myself sort of as a character designer and I when I design brands for people or logos for people I would always usually try to you know uh, market a you know sell them in the idea of doing a trademark character um, so a little mascot or whatever so that's kind of the bulk of what I what I what I used to do and um, and I'm a big fan of like advertising mascots and things like that uh, so I wanted to do another book recommend and this is just fun it doesn't have a lot of, to do with comics although uh, some of the some of the imagery that I'm going to show you uh, would fit very nicely into a comic book and very and just you know just some cool character designers some classic vintage advertising characters and this is a book uh, it's called Ad Boy it's just a small little book, but it's it's all these old vintage, uh, you know, advertising icons, and I just you know it's really cool the design, the colors, the techniques, um, you know, Toucan Sam, the Weiss is that the Weiss Owl, Red Owl is that? Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> Some of these are going way back. A what is that? A and W. Um, you know, Mr. Clean, some serial characters. Uh, Bud Man, <laughs> remember that guy? Vaguely, I vaguely remember him. Um, but yeah, I just, and the way it's, the way the, is this in camera? Am I showing you this whole thing and it's not even showing up? If so, I apologize. But, um, but anyway, oh, here we go. This is probably my favorite. Look at that. That is definitely inspiring. It's a, like a mad scientist guy. Fizzies, imitation cherry fizzies. <laughs> And you know monsters. And, oh man, I love this page. It's great. There's fruit brute from the monster cereals. Uh, but these are just some great advertising icons, and I just I love the design, the way this book is laid out and everything. Um, and there's all kinds of different styles. Look at that. I love that one. I love that the pop that popcorn graphic and um, look at these little things. Colonel Sanders, the Carl's Jr. These little puppets that they give out used to give out at fast food. Um, but um, yeah, this is just a great, fun little book. Um, not a whole lot to do with uh, with comic books, um, other than its illustration and the, you know characters like these. If you're if you're looking to do uh, you know a more humorous take, this might be a, a good sort of reference if you like this style of cartooning. And 
I do. And uh, even though my book's not quite in this style, I really, I really do like this stuff. So I just thought I'd share that with you today before we get on to the process of making comic books. Give you a little history lesson, kind of where I came from uh, before I kind of went crazy into this whole mad scientist thing. Um, but so we are going to go straight to the parallelscope up here and see what's going on with the process of Young and the Dead. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, I am determined to wrap up this page today. So I've got all the, the straight kind of line work done that I did with the Micron pens, all with the ruler and everything. Now I've got some, you know, some of these other shapes. I actually ordered um, some ellipse templates, big ones. I've got some smaller ones, which would have came in handy for these. You can kind of see these little serving dishes, but but I can do that with a brush. Same thing with uh, with this wheel that I'm illustrating right now. If I had some bigger ellipse templates, they come, they it would come out a little straighter. Now, granted, like when I when I did the pencil work on this, for the most part, it was all done digitally, which is. That's one of the great things about working digitally is just uh, everything, you know, get everything perfect with that. Now, sometimes it looks too perfect, but that's depending on, it's depending on, you know, what kind of look you're looking for. So I, there's a few artists that I follow. I kind of mentioned them before. Uh, uh, Sean Galloway's one and then uh, Gurry Hoover's another. Uh, those two, um, I've been reading some of their books and their stuff is very, very technical, very straight. Uh, perfect perspective, you know, and it looks good. You know, it's all all mostly line work, not a lot of shading, which which I do as well. But I don't know. So some, some somehow I want mine to be a little looser than that, I guess. And it all depends on the project. This this that's kind of how I started this out. So I want to kind of keep on that same path. But who knows? You know, once I finish with Young and the Dead, if I tackle another project, it could be. Maybe I'll do it all manga studio. Maybe it'll be a lot tighter. Maybe it'll be looser. Maybe it'll be real sketchy. Who knows? I like to I like to approach different projects. The project that I was working on before this, which um, which never I never completed, and we talked about that too. You can go back on the uh, finished is better than perfect episode that I did. I forgot what episode that was, but we talked about that. But it had a lot of different things, and I might in a future episode I might talk about some of the different differences, like. And it's not necessarily the art, even the art style. It's just different ways that I approached the storytelling, different techniques, and different things that I decided to do with this book that I didn't do in the other, or vice versa. So I, I like I like to approach each project and do something different with it, rather than just remaining the same throughout. So uh, you can call that growing as an artist. You can call it whatever you want. Um, but you know, some of the some of the technical stuff in my last, even though maybe the anatomy wasn't as great in the last book, but I, it was a little more detailed, which I'm going a little looser style with this one. So, like I said, I'm just going to continue on with that. So I am, yeah, I'm going to wrap up this page, and I want to show you this cool art exhibit that I checked out. So we're going to go, I'm probably go straight into that. All right, so this is really cool. It's basically this just this pitch black room that's all the walls are like mirrors. So it's almost like a fun house, but they have all these little LED lights hanging from the ceiling. And you just kind of walk through them and you bump into them and you walk through them and everything, you know, and just kind of try to find your way. And they all change colors. Um, and, you know, sometimes they'll get brighter, sometimes they'll dim, it'll get totally you know, pitch black, but you can't really, you could, it just looks like it goes on forever because of all the mirrors, and you can't even really see yourself in the mirror until you get really close. So like I said, it's really disorienting. You get in there and you kind of get lost, but it was super cool. So I was worried that the camera wouldn't pick it up very well, but I think it, I think it did a pretty good job. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you guys that. It was pretty cool. All right, that's gonna do it for another day of 100 Days of Making Comics. We're gonna take day 51, pull it off the big pad of paper, crumble it up, just to symbolize that we are done with the day. We're gonna move on to the next day. So I will see you tomorrow for day 52. See you then. Hey everyone, you've seen the process, now you can check out the story. Issues 1 through 3 of Young and the Dead are available at my website at cirqueworks.com. Also follow me on social media at the links listed below. Subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this series. There's much more to come.